In Tableau 2020.2, Tableau have added a new capability inside of Tableau called the data model. Now, this data model has actually always existed. This is uh, essentially an enhancement to an existing feature. And that specific enhancement refers to relationships, being able to define the relationships between multiple tables in our data set. Now, let me dive into this um, so I can show you the new interface and how this new feature works. I'm going to connect to a sample file that was actually used in the beta testing and alpha testing for this particular feature. It's called the beta bookshop and you actually see some of Tableau's video uses this data set. I'll try and put a link to it um, so you can download it from my Dropbox if you want to follow along. But otherwise, I'd actually just recommend you just watch this video and try and understand the concepts on its own. Now, the thing you'll notice immediately when you open this is that nothing is different. I've just connected to an Excel file. And apart from this icon, you know, asking you to drag the tables here, which is slightly updated, everything else is the same. The first time you'll notice the difference is when you drag in a table into your view. So as I drag it in and I drop it in, the first thing you'll notice is that instead of a rectangle, we get this square. And this square is a little bit different. It doesn't have the typical sort of uh, interface we're used to. And we now have some new options here. But I'm going to carry on. And I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and uh, create a join, as I typically would have done in my old data set. And I'm going to join the author information to this book. Now, when I go to do that, you'll notice two things. There's a new link being created here. This is uh, affectionately known as the noodle but it actually just signals to you that something is new and different here. It's not going to behave as we're used to. And as I drop that in and I zoom back out, you'll see the new interface for relationships. And so what's actually going on here? Well, to summarize, the data model allows us to work with data on two different levels. The main thing we've been used to up until now is called the physical layer, where we can describe at a row level, the relationships between data sets. And then we can also do things like aggregated joins, which are typically called blends in Tableau. And those have always worked at the physical layer. Whatever result that comes out of Tableau is essentially a table that actually has the information and query built into it. In this new version, we've got something called a logical layer. And that's what we're looking at here, where we just define the relationships between the two tables and then Tableau does the hard work of figuring out how to aggregate the data set, how to avoid things like duplications, and then it gives us the data uh, as we should see it. And so you'll notice that even though I've brought the author table in, my summary doesn't have um, the bookshop data available, okay? You can see I have a little bug here where these disappeared for a second, but you can see here that I only have data from my author. That's because I have it selected here and that's why it's gray. If I select the book, you'll see that that switches over and now this is gray and this is white and now you can see the information here. So some of you then might ask, well, how do I do a join? How do I do a blend? Have those been removed from the product? Well, the answer is no, because there's still a place for joins and blends in the new data model, okay? Let me give you an example now have some information here about each and every book. And I've sort of deliberately created a scenario where I'd want to do a join on this data set using a combination of these two fields to create the book ID. You can see an example here, but I've actually just created these inside of Excel. Now, the thing here is I can't use join calculations in a relationship. So I have to do a join in order to get these two fields to match onto my book table. Okay, so to get the join interface up, what you do is you go to the connection you'd want to join to and then click open. And when you do that, you then get the traditional view we're used to. You see this long rectangle. And now what we've done is we've hopped into what's called the physical layer. At this point, I can then drag the information into my view and you get the traditional sort of join interface that you're used to. You can then click on this interface and essentially edit the information. In my case, what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to bring in all information related to the books. So I'm going to do a left join and I'm going to change this uh, join to work slightly differently. I'm going to go ahead and create a join calculation. And this is why I have to use a join in this particular case, because I can't do this with relationships. So let's just type this in book ID one uh, and plus 
book ID two. And this basically has the effect of concatenating these two IDs into one new ID. And when I hit apply and click OK, you can now see that that physical table is actually manifested here. I can see the book and the info in one table and you've got the join information here. And so this is pretty much ready to go. Now, in order to exit this physical layer, I just need to hit the X here on the top right hand side. You can see I'm circling it with my mouse. And so when I hit X out of that, I'm now back onto the logical layer. And now you see something new. Tableau is letting you know that you've got a join uh, in this particular uh, table and it's made of two tables. And if you double click it, you can see the joins. And again, we can exit that to go back out to the logical layer. And now you can see these two items. Now, the key thing to understand here is that when you then go and start building uh, visualizations using this new data model, Tableau is going to be doing some work behind the scenes to figure out what's the best way of, of connecting these two data sets. So let's go ahead into sheet one and immediately you're gonna see the next new thing. And that is the interface here on the left-hand side. If I just uh, sort of scroll in and zoom into this, you'll notice two things. Firstly, the differentiator between dimensions and measures has sort of been removed and been replaced by this line here. So you just see this subtle, very subtle line next to my mouse here where the arrow is. You can just see me hovering to the right of it. That line shows you the distinction between your measures and dimensions on a per table basis. The next thing to be clear about is that the tables each have their own sections and I can actually collapse these tables like so. And then you have some general calculations below here, okay? Now the way this works is if you create a calculation that spans metrics across multiple data sets, then they'll actually appear here at the bottom, yeah, at the bottom of this view. So if I get a metric from books and authors, the calculation will appear here. Now, if I create a calculation that is solely using items from the book table, then that calculation will appear here at the bottom of the book table. And it will appear in the usual sort of, um, uh, sort of you know, expectation where you have, you know, dimensions up here and measures just below here. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, the next thing to be aware of is that you can still see the difference between a dimension and measure if you just click and drag one of these two, you'll see here you get this differentiator that shows you where the separator is between dimensions and measures, okay? So that hasn't gone away, it's still there, and you can see I've changed this to a dimension, and I can drag it right back and put it back as a measure. Okay, we've introduced you to the interface, we're now in the sheet, um, and we're already connected to our data. Well, how does this change the behavior of our data source? Well, the thing to be aware of here is that when we start bringing in items. Let's say I bring in a book, uh, in this particular case, the book ID. I can bring in a title as well, just to make this a little bit more personable, okay? We can just go ahead and interact with our other data set. So I can bring in first name and last name of the other authors. And in the background, Tableau is essentially doing the queries required to go and bring that data. Now, you might also get a scenario where um, you want to do a different type of question. You see a lot of analysis when we do joins is typically predicated on a primary data set. So you typically ask questions from the perspective of that primary data set. But what if you wanted to ask questions in a slightly different order? What if you wanted to analyze all the authors who are currently writing books but haven't published a book yet? Well, how would you do that? Well, here in Tableau, because we have this relationships, we don't have to create another connection from the perspective of the author. You see, back in the previous versions of Tableau, that's what we would have to have done and then potentially blended the data in to see those two perspectives. But here, we can actually answer that question ourselves just by building a different view. And I'll go ahead and do that in another sheet. Okay, so we're in the sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and start building the view. First thing I'm gonna do is actually bring the author ID into the view. Okay, and then what I want to do is bring the count of books written by that author. And so if I just drop that in, you'll notice that you see I have some authors who haven't got any books to their name, okay? And so what I can do is I can actually bring that into the filters just by dragging that in and filter this to just show the values that show zero. And here are my authors um, who haven't, uh, according to my data set, published a book. 
Now, it might just be that this relationship needs a little bit more analysis, or you might have gaps in your data. But the key thing here is I'm not having to go back and change my connection. I'm doing everything from one connection, okay? So this is a pretty powerful new feature. It fundamentally changes the way you think about data sources. Um, it's going to change the way you work with data sources as well, but it doesn't materially change the type of charts or visualizations that you can build. It just makes it much, much easier to get to the data that you need much, much faster. And also in terms of performance, it might improve the way things work because uh, whereas in the past you might have had, for example, one connection and then three other connections to blend to at different levels of aggregation, well, with relationships, you can do all of those different levels of aggregation directly from one connection because each view has its own unique query to the data source. Each view has a different substantiation of the same data. And you define that by basically building your visualization and also doing calculations um, in Tableau. And so that's a really, really powerful, powerful concept to be aware of. Now, I can't possibly cover all the important information that's required to understand for this feature. The best way to learn is to actually start playing with it yourself and start understanding how it works. Open existing workbooks, maybe take on some challenges that you typically needed blending or some really complex LODs for. But Tableau have got some great resources that I'm just going to highlight right now. I'm gonna open up my PowerPoint here because I've actually got a slide with some really, really fundamental concepts that they've got on their documentation. You can find links to these images and uh, tables uh, in the description below. But one thing to be aware of here is that all of this information has been sort of synthesized in a couple of uh, very simple articles that highlight the difference between the two uh, concepts. And the key thing to also remember is that we're not losing the old behavior of joins and you know, unions and blends. We still have that capability. We're just adding a new concept. And so as I go through these images, you can see that Tableau have very clearly articulated how these things work. And have also differentiated the difference between the two. This table in particular is a really powerful explainer of what is going to be different from the two. And also what to expect, because there are a lot of quirks and habits that we've gotten used to where actually now we can be a little bit more brave with how our data sets work and it might meaningfully change the amount of data preparation that you're requiring to do uh, up front. There's also uh, some comparisons between relationships and blends and when they can be used and then finally there's some guides of when to use each of these options. So relationships become the new default. In fact, every time you open up a visualization, you start building and connecting to data, it will by default start with relationships. And in most cases, this will normally just work fine. But if you start noticing some odd behaviors or you think those relationships aren't performing correctly, you need to bear in mind that it's not gonna solve every single scenario. For example, here we have joins, which are still applicable. I showed you an example of that before. And also unions and blends will still have their individual places when you have data sets coming from lots of different places and you need to be able to sort of do some uh, basic aggregation to those before you then use them in a relationship. So this is a really, really powerful feature. The last thing to show you is if I go back to Tableau and I go back and edit my data source, for the advanced users out there, this relationship is actually quite a powerful thing because not only do I have the ability to you know, use one field for the relationship, I can add more fields as part of the relationship. And that's a really powerful way of sort of working with this. But the other thing is if you actually understand some of the advanced concepts behind this data model, what you can do is you can actually give Tableau some information about the nature of your data sets. But the key thing here is these are actually quite sensible defaults. So unless you understand these concepts of cardinality, referential integrity, don't change these. They can do some really funky things with your data sets. Uh, but if you do understand them, then you've got the sort of granular controls here in order to sort of play around with how these work and so what output you get from your data source. Okay, that's been a really short introduction into the data model. Um, I highly encourage you to have a play with the feature um, and get in touch with comments below. I'm probably going to find a way of doing a series of videos on this topic with an example that we can follow through lots of different scenarios, but that will probably take a bit of time to find a good example data set that people can follow along with. 
But notwithstanding that, what I will do is I'll start posting blog posts to this particular topic that cover this in more detail as they come out from the community. So be sure to check back on this video and see what, what blog, blogs have been posted in the description below. Otherwise, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you like the video, hit, hit like, hit subscribe. If not, if you've got some feedback, drop it in the comments below uh, and I'll try and get to those uh, very soon. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.